Hello, everyone. Welcome today to the local agency technical assistance. Broadband grant program application demonstration. Today, the communications division broadband deployment team members will be uh, providing you with an overview of the application for grants. I'll be joined in a little while by two of my colleagues, Brewster Fong and Michael Ammermuller. And before we jump into the application, which is a spreadsheet that we're going to go through, I want to make sure that you understand where to find the application and other helpful information. If you're not already familiar with the program website, then I suggest checking that out as a starting point. This slide has as a URL uh, for it, which is https colon forward slash forward slash bit dot ly forward slash cpuc lata, and it is case sensitive. Those are uppercase letters in the last section as shown on the slide. Um, if it's easier for you, go to the CPUC's main webpage at cpuc.ca.gov and search for local agency technical assistance in the search box at the top of the page. So get yourself to that page and scroll down to important information for grantees, which is a section about midpoint, and you'll see the application spreadsheet link, as well as the grantee administrative manual link. Both of these can be downloaded and um, the application is a fillable spreadsheet that you will need to save with your organization's name on it and fill out before you upload it in an email for submission. And this grantee administrative manual will be a useful instructional guide and also provide more context on the program if needed. And it's um, a complement to the decision and the rules for the program, which are in much greater detail and also provided on our webpage. Um, our email address is broadband.techassist at cpuc.ca.gov. Please send any questions that come up and this will also be the address for submitting your applications. Um, our team will be happy to respond and help you with your process. With that, I'm going to switch over to the spreadsheet application and give you a quick overview. And then my colleagues will also begin helping to walk through the details. I will now provide an overview of the application. So, as I mentioned, the local agency technical assistance grant application is a fillable spreadsheet that you will get off of our web page. Um, once you have clicked on that link on the web page, it will download to your desktop and you should save the file um, with your organization's name and any other specific title information that makes sense. And then uh, once you are in the document, you will see application checklist is tab one. There are four tabs, and those are the four sections of the application. The second tab is called project summary. The third section or tab is budget summary. And the fourth is geography. Um, we will be going through each of these in detail momentarily. Um, and I just want to let you know that the checklist is a combination of fillable information and instructions for supplemental information that you are required to um, include with your email of your application. And then there's a checkbox for each item that needs to be completed. The budget summary tab and the project, I'm sorry, the project summary tab and the budget summary tab are both high level overviews of the information that would be in your project proposal, which would either be a proposed contract or a project proposal. And we'll go into that more as well in a minute. And the fourth tab is the geography tab, which does ask for more details and data about your location and project intention um, geographically. So those that's a quick overview of what you'll see when you get into the application. And, as I mentioned, please be sure to save it with your organization's name, et cetera. So with that, we will my, uh, move into the next part of the presentation with my colleague, Michael Ammermuller. Thank you.
Right now, we're going to look through the first tab of the application, which is the grant application checklist. Uh, this uh, provides both the applicant as well as staff uh, further understanding of whom is applying and what has been supplied as part of the application. This is a combination of checklists for things that have been included, as well as fillable um, lines. So, for example, in the first part, you will check um, that you've supplied the information of the name of the organization, as well as the address, as well as any whoever the key contract is for the staff management or the manager of the contract for the project. Further down, uh, you will also provide a project title, a brief description, as well as a project location for the project in for the uh, for the project being uh, requested in this application for that award grant. Uh, everything that's in orange on this spreadsheet is actually something that's gonna be needed to be supplied as a separate attachment uh, to this application. We're asking for a check to be done to ensure that you have not only uh, keep track of it yourself for when things have been attached, but that we know when things have been attached. For example, this first item, which is a letter of support, which shows uh, coordination with other jurors, with other uh, local agencies that may be applying uh, for um, show coordination as required by uh, the guidelines and rules for this, for the LAD applications uh, program. Uh, the next one would be number five, which is the project proposal or proposed contract. Uh, proposals can be done for in staff work or a proposed contract for uh, if a contractor will be working on this project. As noted in the um, in the instructions here in this box, uh, the, the contract or proposal must include the scope of the work, uh, detailed cost, proposed timeline, as well as some sort of geographic basis for the uh, proposed area. In addition, um, as you can see, that if there are going to be multiple work products being done for a particular project, we will, those will also need to be laid out in the project proposal as well. Further down, uh, there's a proposed total budget that we are requesting. Uh, in addition, on both project summary and budget summary, which will be included on both tabs two and three below, which we will go into further, which will be uh, providing a summary of both the project itself as well as the total budget and dollar amount to be spent. Finally, uh, as we get down the list, there'll be whom in the organization will be receiving the payment. Uh, you, you can list them here uh, on the, in these fields on the right. And then affirmations for um, incremental staff time, a 24 month completion, as well as supplying a notarized affidavit that can be signed, that needs to be signed and uh, notarized to be included with the submission as well. Finally, the last line will be an electronic signature uh, affirming the, uh, including all the attachments for uh, this application. All right, we're gonna start um, reviewing part two or tab two called project summary. Um, basically the instructions are as um, follows. Uh, basically you wanna say broadband, um, you wanna provide information about a broadband technical assistance project that supports a local agency or tribe, the type of projects that um, you may include that are included, but not limited to include any kind of needs assessment, market study, broadband strategy plans, business plans, environmental feasibility, or engineering design studies or reports, forming a, a joint power authority, uh, consultant, and community-based community, community uh, organization services. Going down the, um, this tab here, the first thing you'll see is we were asking for the name of the uh, and location of the project grant, our proposed grant project, the type of project and the scope, We'd like a total uh, total uh, budget of uh, what the, what you're proposing, and then a timeline. We'd like you to include both the start and end dates, and your project must be completed within 24 months. Uh, line nine, um, what we would like is that for you to provide um, the proposed technical assistance grant support broadband infrastructure deployment to unserved and underserved households and businesses at speeds of at least 100 megabits of uh, both upload and download speeds. We'd like you to provide an, in your separate rooms. Um, line 10, we'd like you to provide um, 
uh, resumes and qualifications for your consultant staff and your team experience. This can be provided separately. We line 11, we'd also like a short description of the project suitable for posting on our web page. And we do provide a, a, a short example below. And if you look at line 15, there is an example here of um, what um, a proposed technical grant should look like or the type of study or project uh, description that uh, you want to provide. Line 12, you can provide any other type of information. That's it. Thank you, Brewster. The third tab of the local agency technical assistance application spreadsheet. This is where you will provide your budget summary. The details will be in your, your proposed contract or your project proposal, but this is a summary, so it's high level and should be pretty self-explanatory and fill in your name as the applicant, the project name, and then the reviewers need to know each work product that you will be proposing to complete using the technical assistance grant. So any work product needs to be outlined in this budget summary as well as in your more detailed project proposal or proposed contract. And this will be a two year um, maximum timeline. So we have three listed for each year, but you may only have one or two, or you may have five work products, whatever is relevant for you, add more space as needed and write in the title or a short description of what you'll be doing for each work, what you'll be producing for each work product. And then as well as the timeline for that in weeks. Um, carrying down below here in gray, we'd like the cost for each of these work products, the estimated cost. And this will be the funding that would come from the grant to cover the cost of consultants, subconsultants, other organizations you may want to work with, such as community-based organizations and or for work that you're proposing to do in-house. In um, again, for each work product and use more space as needed. And then it's simply a total of these costs. Um, and just to show you, there's different lines here because you may have different, there may be a work product here, which could be, let's just say, um, a need assessment. And the cost you could be proposing is I'm not going to use a real number, I'll just say like X, Y, Z is the cost. And then we'll have, maybe we'll have a consult, a subconsultant cost here. And you'll have a consultant cost as well. That will be a different price. For example, so every line for different types of costs that relate to each work product within each of the ones that you're requesting a grant to cover. Okay. And we'll see the total of that down here. And then there is a 15% maximum allowed for administrative costs, which you will also fill in here for each work product. And then the spreadsheet will total those items and you can just check and make sure the math is correct. And that will be very helpful for staff to review your application and have this, this summary tab. Thank you. Thank you for that review of tab number three, budget summary. Uh, next, we will go over tab number four, geography. Uh, at different points in the application, we have asked for uh, project location descriptions. For example, on application checklist tab one, we've asked for it here. Uh, project summary tab, we have asked for the location description here. Uh, but here on the geography tab, we are asking for a bit more detail. Uh, first, we're asking again for the type of local agency that is applying, uh, again, for the brief description. However, here we are asking for census block information. Uh, you have the list available. We ask you to submit that as a separate document and note the name of the file name in the field to the right here. Uh, if you do not have a list available, uh, you can use the data query tool on the CPUC's California Interactive Broadband Map, uh, which is described further in the Grantee Manual too. But basically, you can draw a shape over the map and the tool will export the census blocks 
uh, as a CSV file, which you can submit with an application as well. Uh, if you do not have information, that detailed information just yet, you can provide the name of the county or counties, city or cities, zip codes, or provide any other unique geographic data to describe the service area a bit further than just what has been described in the short description and previous tabs. Furthermore, if possible, we ask for either a shapefile and a map of the intended geographic location. If you have a shapefile, you can choose from this drop-down menu whether you do or not. And then if you do, you can provide the name of the shapefile in this field. If no shapefile is included, please put NA. Similarly, if a map will be included, choose yes or no from the drop-down menu and provide the name of the map here. Thank you, Michael, for that overview of the geography tab. And thank you, Brewster, for uh, your demonstration as well. Um, so this is the time to conclude the, the webinar application demonstration for the Local Agency Technical Assistance Program. Uh, we're so happy that you joined us today. If you need more background on the program, and depending on what stage you're at and learning about it, please know that on our webpage, we also have a pre-recorded overview webinar that may be helpful. So um, just want to leave you with our contact information again, which is broadband.techassist at cpuc.ca.gov. Please send us your applications and any questions that come up. Thanks again, folks. Have a great day.